What's up? Merry Christmas, people. I just wanted to thank everyone out there that's been watching me over the years and even my new subscribers. Thanks to every one of you guys for building the channel up to where it's at. If it wasn't for you guys watching the videos, I'd have absolutely no reason whatsoever to make these videos. This is a video I put together. It's something I shot back in October and uh, it's over TXV and a water source heat pump. But don't flip off yet because it's water source heat pump. It's just the same thing as a regular heat pump. The principles are all the same. The only difference is the condenser is water instead of air cooled. Here we go. Today we are coming back to change some parts. We had a capacitor bad. We had a TXV that was actually bad, which I probably should have recorded it since it's always the TXV. And so we are pumping it down right now and we're working on geothermal. What we have here is furnace down here in the basement and we have two geothermals. So we got an air handler up in the attic. What we had was a pastor. It was about four farads lower than what it's rated for. It's rated for 40. I think it was at 38. We're getting that changed out. We just pumped the system down. Uh, we had to obviously energize the reversing valve to run it in tooling mode. Valved off the liquid, pumped it down just like a regular air conditioner. Nothing special there. We got this done. We're just going to go upstairs and uh, change out the TXV. Uh, they have something called sulfur water. Uh, sulfur water is something you have when you got well water. You can see right there, that's what the copper looks like. Underneath there, there's the copper. See the black crud? That black crud is the gases that are in the air from the well water. And it attacks the solder joints. You can see it over here really good. It's really bad stuff. It can completely just eat up refrigerant uh, connections and stuff like that. So that's, that's what sulfur water is. I changed that uh, dryer out shortly after starting here, about a year. I don't even rem really remember doing it, but that's what we're doing today. It's just a short preview of some of the things we're doing today. We went ahead and got the new capacitor in there, got a wire tie back in. They used a stainless steel wrap before. I got a nice round one. It's, it's not going nowhere. Got the high voltage off. Uh, this is controlled by the low voltage up in the unit. The way we diagnose this TXV, you've got two TXVs in a geothermal or a heat pump. Well, this one here, we've got one on the inside. This one's used when it's running in the uh, heating mode. The one up on the air handler is used during the cooling mode. So we ran this thing in the cooling mode and I had a 28 degree evaporator temperature. There was no reason for it to be that low. I added a little bit of refrigerant to it after checking subcooling and stuff. It made no difference. Subcooling came up from four up to, I think, nine and it did not change. It was still running 28 degree evaporator temperature. I had proper airflow, all the registers were open and we had heat load. So we've eliminated all the problems that would cause a low evaporator temperature, which is airflow. At that point, it's a restriction, which is your TXV or your thermal expansion valve, however you wanna call it. We're running in cooling mode, then we run it in heat mode and heat mode does fine. Well, in heating mode, that TXV up on the top is bypassed. It comes down to here and then it's metered through this one. Then that, uh, as it goes through the condenser now upstairs, it comes through the air meters, it goes through the coax coil, which now is your evaporator, and then recirculates back into the compressor and goes all over again. Usually it's just trial and elimination. Generally it's either low on charge or it's a bad thermal expansion valve, unless something catastrophic's changed. If it was a properly designed system like this one was, there's no reason for airflow issues, all the registers were open, all that sort of thing. Now the original initial call for being out here was because his electric bill, or I shouldn't even say his electric bill, he noticed it going into auxiliary heat, which this has electric strips of backup. This is electric air handler, which you're gonna see here in a minute. Well, we're just two months into, or maybe a month into the heat coming on. Some people ain't even turned their heat on yet because we're right now in October, end of October. His electric bill wouldn't be high. I was told high bills, but then again, they weren't here. So I had to get secondhand knowledge from the person that let me in. So it's just kind of questionable as to whether I was getting good knowledge which comes down to question your person that's calling in and getting good story about what their complaint is so that you properly address it. And this is one of those instances where if they're not here, it can make it rather difficult if it's not a blatant obvious thing. So like I said, we found the TXV running low uh, saturation temperature. We knew that wasn't right. So that's what we're here today to do is to change that. So let's go up there and do that real quick and I'll show you what we got going on. So we come over here to the air handlers up here in the attic. You can see the line set comes down through here, 
goes under the insulation, goes over in that dark back corner wall, goes straight down to the basement. Actually, I think it might go right here. Goes straight down. Yeah, there's the gas line going all the way down to the basement. This is a two-story house. It's a fairly larger house. As you can tell, it's got a lot of room in here. He did mention to me that he removed the trap because it had broke and was leaking. So that needs replaced. The filter dryer is getting changed and our coils in there. I put a new aluminum coil in it in 2017 and it's being somewhat resistant. You can see that water, sulfur gas in the air is even affecting stuff up here in the attic, which is pretty potent stuff. Now, they got water treatment system that um, treats it so you can't taste it or anything like that, but the effects are still there. You can see the TXVs kind of ate up pretty good there. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't give you, I don't think, that coupling piece that goes from the aluminum to the valve because they used a flare valve, which is kind of a poor choice. The copper goes into that piece there. It's all corroded and ratty looking. You can see the aluminum's not even doing all that good. It usually won't be affected by this uh, gas that's in the air, but it's doing a number on it. You can tell it's kind of white and chalky looking. It's not good. Filter dryer, um, we're going to swap that out, like I said, but uh, it's one of them days. What I end up doing is using my Leatherman there with my little Sawzall blade that's in there. That thing made short work of it, so got right in there and cut that plastic that's not needed because it's for a horizontal application that we're not doing. Went ahead and chopped the 3 8 line with my linesman's, the tube, and the bulb tube. When I clipped the bulb tube, I did get pressure coming out of it, so I know that that bulb was still good. So chances are we got something gummed up inside the valve itself. We can pop that apart and take a look inside and see if the... Uh, piston rod is uh, gummed up full of crud. The uh, fitting here seems like it turns halfway decent. I'm going to probably get my wire brush wheel on there and get it on there, clean that up, and then we'll embrace it and we'll get that thing clamped back down. You can see that uh, aluminum there just does not look very good at all. That looks, hmm, doesn't look so good. All right, so we ended up putting a little coupling piece in there a little longer so we can make up just cut out the other piece and then I ended up losing the one that went here and had to remake it anyway so I wouldn't have had to done that. Went ahead and painted the copper in there gray just to help give it some extra protection. Uh, got had to end up making my own 90 there, my own 90 here but and then uh, sprayed the bulb and stuff that, that crab just tends to eat anything the paint will slow it down some it's not going to stop it i've had everything from cold galvanized sprays that carrier blue crap that peels off to all the stuff just tends to fall off so while that's drying i'm gonna go down there and pull vacuum on this thing and uh, get it running again that's what we had to do just uh re -un undid the uh, bulb there bypass tube you can see it right down there just undid it. They had a, a little stub and I just didn't want to take a chance of it leaking on the other stub piece. Got it in there and uh, good to go. Like I said, all that crap was changed just uh, in 17. So we've got it going. We have it running. Let's go ahead and backlight it. Running about a five degree subcooling so far. Our evap temperature is running 39, so that's a huge improvement over 28. Superheat's a little low, but it just came on. It's only been running for probably two minutes or so. The uh, bulb, I didn't insulate it because it wasn't, uh, generally a lot of times they don't insulate it in this particular model. So we may have to insulate it just in case. Uh, it may not be sensing the temperature, so it's uh, flooding it. Right now it's not horrible, but I have a feeling it's gonna come back. Uh, it just came on. We're starting this off in cooling mode. That way if there's anything that uh, may have broke loose, it's going to be driven into the filter dryer first. That's generally what most of the manufacturers, uh, especially in the geothermal world, recommend is starting off in cooling mode. I did say in the, uh, earlier about one T or two TXVs in them. Now, a lot of the geothermals that are one piece unit will have one TXV and they're a bi directional flow TXV. Whereas these ones here are just uh, a traditional TXV with a check valve and it bypasses. Uh, one direction and runs metering in the other. This is what we got so far. We're gonna let this run for a little bit. The book, if I remember correctly, 
and for the temperatures we had, we had 10 degrees subcooling I think yesterday and we're running in cooling mode and our temperatures was somewhere around 60 degrees and we're at 50 right on our chart depending on which one you go with subcooling could be somewhere between 9 and 12 depending on the uh, gallons per minute that we're running we're running at the higher uh, three gallons per minute which on this is one of the few that I actually made it pretty easy to understand at uh, your pressure drop which is right here you go over to your tonnage and that would tell you your gallons per minute that's total gallons per minute down here is gallons per minute per ton what they're showing here is uh, we had about a five psi delta p is a call we're running right at about 60 degrees so we're between the two of them close enough nine so three six nine three gallons per ton coming down here so you got three two and one i did another video on this uh, I'll link that right above right now it's on geothermals and how i check the charge same thing here but uh, this is nothing more than a water cooled condenser and an air cooled evaporator in the uh, cooling mode and then in the heating mode it's a, a water cooled evaporator and an a air cooled condenser so it just depends on which mode we're in but you get the point we're right there let's go ahead and see if we can wrap a little bit of reform tape around it see if it makes a difference all right so it didn't make much of a difference so i went ahead and threw it in heat mode we're on the two lines that are traditional suction and liquid but in heat mode that uh, suction line now is your hot gas line your liquid line stays your liquid line which is your 3 8 line now we're measuring the pressure across our txv it's going in at 226 coming back at 217 so we have about a 10 degree or a 10 psi drop across our txv this is another way I kind of judge whether a TXV is acting up on the inside when you're working on a heat pump. I just basically judge it off of what our drop is. You're always going to have a drop, but it's not going to be extreme. You start getting something like 30, 40, something like that, you know you're way off the charts. Generally, you'll have something like you're seeing here, maybe 10, maybe 15. It just kind of depends on the line size length and all those sort of things. Don't know if there's really any charts out there that really gives you exact numbers, but even like right now, we're barely at 10. So I wanted to run that TXV in the other direction just to kind of get it warmed up and then have it resettle again. Uh, I did get two wraps of insulation around it, which is very tight where it was at. Let's see if that makes a difference. All I did to get this done was just to yank the O-terminal, which a lot of times I'll just run it in cooling mode and put it back together. So let's go ahead and stick it back underneath O. And we'll watch it do its thing. All right, now it's acting a little bit better. Get the subcooling up a little bit. Superheat's stabilizing out too, so we're good to go.